Hi, and welcome to Rent All with Tim. I'm Tim. I'm glad you're here and that we get to spend a little time together. On today's episode, I'm going to be comparing two great daily trainers that are both new for 2021. It's the Hoka Clifton 8 and the Asics Nova Blast 2. Now, both of these shoes are highly cushioned, they're soft, yet responsive to run in. And they've each seen updates to the previous versions of themselves. But today, we're gonna to take a look to see how they compare to one another. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes that I'm about to review for you. So let's do that. But then when we come back together, I'm gonna to take a real deep dive into the Hoka Clifton 8 and the Asics Nova Blast 2 to try to answer that all important question, which shoe is right for you? If you're new to the channel, I post running shoe reviews, comparisons, and shoe battles weekly. But I also like to post other videos related to running as well. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos about running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. Now this video is not intended to be a full review of either shoe, but if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description below to reviews that I've completed for each one previously. Now both of these shoes cost 130 US dollars. They're neutral road shoes that I ordered true to size and they fit me perfectly. There is a difference in the weight. With the Asics Nova Blast 2, they are the heavier of the two shoes and they came in at 9.6 ounces for men's size 9 on my scales or 273 grams. While the Hoka Clifton 8, they came in at 8.9 ounces or 252 grams. So let's look at the upper on these two shoes. I'm gonna start with the Hoka Clifton 8 first. Now this is an engineered mesh material. They have lots of perforations up in the toe box to allow plenty of airflow to keep you cool and comfortable while you're out running. And I did find there to be ample room for me to be able to splay my toes. I didn't feel like I was cramped, but compared to the Asics Nova Blast 2, now that shoe I feel like has a little bit more space up in the toe box to be able to splay my toes. Then as we work our way around to the side of the shoe, you can see that those perforations continue all the way back to the heel counter. They have plenty of them. Now they do uh, stiffen up that midsection of the shoe with some additional material here to allow you to get a nice snug black down feeling across the midfoot section of the shoe. And then as we work our way back around to the heel counter, you can see that there's not a whole lot going on here. It just stiffens up with some additional material. They do have their Hoka logo back there and then they have 
a heel clip there to finish off the back of the shoe. Now, as we take a look at the Asics Nova Blast 2, here they have a jacquard material for the upper, and you can see that they too have plenty of perforations, not as many, but they're much larger. And as we continue to look along the side of the shoe, you can see that they kind of lose those perforations as they work their way back around. They do have their Asics logo across the midfoot section of the shoe as a plastic overlay. Now, I was able to get a nice secure lockdown feeling across the midfoot section of the shoe then i think a little bit more so it does feel a little more form fitting across that midfoot section than in the hoka clifton 8 i think that has everything to do with the geometry of the uh, midsole and outsole and we'll talk about more of that here in just a minute and then they finish off their shoe again with some plastic uh, heel clips here to add some stability uh, to your heel Taking a look at the eyelet chain on each of these. Now, it's pretty much the same. I mean, they're really close. I wouldn't say they're identical, but pretty darn equivalent to one another. With the Hoka Clifton 8, you can see at the start of the uh, lace enclosure system that they have a couple of little notches up here. Now, I've always found that that makes the fit feel a little bit better or a little bit uh, closer fit for me, so I don't have quite so much bunching up in the toe box. It seems to eliminate that. And then they've got some additional material around the eyelets themselves to give it a little extra durability. And they also have that extra eyelet in case you want to run with a runner's knot. And then as we turn and we look at the A6 Nova Blast 2, you can see now their notches are just a little bit bigger, but they serve the same purpose for me anyway. It just seems to reduce the bunching that you might get in that area. And they too have that additional material around the eyelets with the additional eyelet to run with a runner's knot. So pretty darn close to being the same in terms of the lace enclosure system and the eyelet chain. Looking at the tongue, now here with the Hoka Clifton 8, it has a much more padded tongue. You can see just how thick it is. There's lots of material there. They have it almost quilted. Now it's pretty solid, so it doesn't allow a ton of airflow across the midfoot section of the shoe, so they do run a little bit warmer than the Asics Nova Blast 2. You're not gonna have to worry about it migrating around because it does have a semi-gusset on each side, so that feels really comfortable. I didn't have any issues feeling the laces across my midfoot in either shoe, but especially not in the Hoka Clifton 8 because that tongue, like I said, is heavily padded. When we look at the A6 Nova Blast 2 in comparison, this is a much thinner material, but still adequate. There's plenty there in order to keep you comfortable. I didn't have any issues with that at all. It is a little bit thinner. And as we look at the tongue, you can see that it does have a lot of perforations in that material, so it allows more airflow to keep you cool and comfortable when you're out running. And it does have a semi-gusset both on you know, each side of the tongue. So as with the Hoka Clifton 8, you don't have to worry about it migrating around. It feels really comfortable on foot. I think they both do a good job, but if you're looking for a really comfortable feeling or a little bit more luxury, I would say that the Hoka Clifton 8's probably got it over the A6 Nova Blast 2 for the tongue. So let's check out the padding around the heel collar and the tab of each of these. I'm gonna start with the Hoka Clifton 8 first. Here you can see that they have plenty of padding around the heel collar and into the tab. I often call this a pillow style because it kind of rests up more around the top of the collar. It reminds me of a pillow that you might rest your head on. And then in the heel counter area, they have this Achilles heel flare, which is a little bit different than the A6 Nova Blast. Plenty of padding in order to rest your Achilles in. I found it to be really comfortable that way. And I didn't have any hot spots in either shoes in terms of the padding or in the comfort level. I found it to be very comfortable in each of these shoes. Now, with the A6 Nova Blast 2, I'd say it's just about the same amount in terms of you know how much padding is there around the uh, heel collar as well as in the tab of the shoe. Again, here they feature a more classic heel counter design, so they don't have that Achilles heel flare, but they do have this pull tab uh, that you can use to help get your shoes on. And just a quick note about that pull tab. I've had some comments from some viewers that their A6 Nova Blast 2 shoe did not come with a pull tab. So it's kind of interesting. I got both of these shoes from Roadrunner Sports. I'm not sure why A6 would have stopped putting that heel tab or, or pull tab in the um, heel counter of the shoe. But mine have it. Uh, let me know if yours uh, does or doesn't if you own a pair. So let's check out the heel counter. I'm going to start with the Hoka Clifton 8 first. I'm going to just put it up on my shoulder and give it the pinch test. And here you can see as I try to pinch this material together, it's really not moving. It's pretty solid. And here's why. You know, they 
and Hoka style. They brought that EVA foam up quite high around the heel counter and then it wraps all the way around from the lateral to the medial side of the shoe. Now that gives you just a little extra stability feeling. It almost gives you the uh, sense of sitting in the bucket seat of a racing car. And then they added this extra plastic clip around here too and that's kind of covered in a cloth type material. And all together it just gives you a nice stable feeling in your heel. And there's plenty of structure even if I try to push forward on it. So lots of material back in the heel counter and a very similar approach to the A6 Nova Blast. So it's, it's really remarkable just how much similarity there is between these two shoes. So if I put this up on my shoulder and try to give it that pinch test, not quite as much resistance as there is in the Clifton 8, but still plenty of it there. And two, as I push forward on it, lots of uh, resistance going forward as well. And then much like the Hoka Clifton 8, you know, the uh, Flight Foam Blast material, your heel actually sits down about where this line is. So Asics brought that material up a little ways, which wraps around your heel. Again, kind of that bucket seat of a racing car feel to it. And they too have these extra plastic heel clips around on each side that give it that extra bit of structure and stability to your heel. So let's take a look at the midsole on each of these. I'm going to start with the Hoka Clifton 8 first. Here Hoka features their compressed EVA foam and they have plenty of it. They have 29 millimeter stack height in the heel and 24 millimeters up in the forefoot. So they have a five millimeter offset. It's super cushioned, super soft and fun to run in. There's lots of responsiveness. But let's take a look at the geometry and just see how they sculpted that midsole foam. Here you can see that they have a bit of a rocker design. They've got quite a bit of a heel bevel here. And then of course they have their early stage meta rocker. So that means that they start sculpting that foam right about at the start of the metatarsal head. And you can see how aggressive that is moving forward. So it helps you move through your gait cycle just a little bit more smoothly. And then as we turn it over and we take a look closer look at that heel design area, you can see it's a rounded heel. Now they do have this groove back here. Now that gives your heel just a little bit of a squish factor for me. So if you're a heel striker, I think you're going to notice that. It makes it pretty soft and comfortable there to land on. And then they have a pretty deep groove here from the heel all the way up through to about the midsection of the shoe. And that gives you a little bit of a trampoline effect. So again, it gives you a little extra bounce or pop as you move through your gait cycle. Now comparing that to the A6 Nova Blast 2, here they have their Flight Foam Blast material. Again, that's from heel to toe, and they have just about the same amount, really. They have 30 millimeter stack height in the heel and 22 millimeters up in the forefoot, so they have an 8 millimeter offset, so slightly different than the 5 millimeters we just looked at. Now here, A6 took that Flight Foam Blast material and they cut all of these geometric shapes and designs into that midsole material, and that's to promote a more bouncy or springy feeling uh, you know, as you're moving through your gait cycle. I think they did an excellent job with that and they really did a nice job in stabilizing the heel from last year's version of the shoe. So let's take a look more at the geometry of that midsole and here you can see slightly different than the Hoka uh, Clifton 8. They have a bit of a concaved area here in the midfoot section of the shoe so that adds to that trampoline inspired design that they have in this midsole material. And then here in the heel you can see that they did extend that flight foam blast material out quite a bit further uh, than they do in the Hoka Clifton 8 did with their uh, compressed EVA foam. And then as we flip it over and we take a look at that heel design, they have a swallowtail heel design here uh, that makes it a little more smoothly, I think, as you move through your gait cycle. If you're a heel striker especially, it gives you almost like a shock absorber or suspension, I guess, is uh, probably a better term to use. So depending on which side that you might land on, there's a little bit of give, so it makes it a little bit less jarring or a little more natural feeling as you move through your gait cycle. And then as we flip them over and we take a look at the uh, design of that midsole material, you can see, as I mentioned, that it is a trans trampoline design. So you have this bit of a pod, I guess, up here in the forefoot that allows a little bit of a pop off your toe because that material then, you know, compresses and then rebounds you as you move through uh, your gait cycle. And then there in the heel, you can see that they have this deep groove that goes uh, all the way back to the heel counter. And again, a similar effect here where you've just kind of compressed that foam and then it pops back together, giving you a little bit extra uh, spring or bounce through your gait cycle. So taking a look at the flexibility of that forefoot on each of these and that midsole material, I'm going to start with the Hoka Clifton 8 first. If I just kind of try to flex that toe, you can see that there's not a ton of give there. So it's a pretty stiff 
uh, forefoot feeling in, to run it in the Hoka Clifton 8s compared to the A6 Nova Blast 2. If I do the same thing here, it flexes just a little bit easier, actually quite a bit easier. So these do feel a little bit more natural as you're flowing through your gait cycle. Now with the, with the uh, A6 Nova Blast 2, I feel like they're a little bit more spring or bounce to them, but they're not quite as fast a feeling on foot as I get with the Hoka Clifton 8. And I think some of that has to do with the flex that I just talked about in, uh, up in the forefoot of the shoe. I feel like I'm kind of digging in or popping off a little bit uh, more so in the Hoka Clifton 8. Plus these are a little bit lighter and I think that helps them feel a little faster too. So let's flip these over. I want to talk about the landing platform on each of these because up in the forefoot, they're almost identical in terms of the width. The biggest difference here is the Hoka Clifton 8 kind of maintains that width all the way through to the heel. So you have lots of area for you to land on. It gives you a nice stable feeling. But it also, because of the way that that design is, you feel like they're a little bit looser or not as form-fitting across the midfoot section of the shoe. Even though they feel a little bit more narrow in the toe box, they do feel a little bit looser in that midfoot section. And again, because they're not quite as form fitting. So we can see that here on the ASICS Nova Blast. Again, almost identical in terms of the width of the forefoot. But here they have this hourglass design. So it gets much more narrow here in the midfoot section of the shoe. And then it widens out back in the heel. So again, you have a more form fitting upper because of that geometry of that midsole and the outsole. So let's take a look at that outsole and see how they're protecting all of their soft foam that you have underfoot. And with the Hoka Clifton 8, you can see that they have plenty of rubber up in the forefoot and then there in the heel and all of the high abrasion areas where you're going to expect to see wear first. So I don't think durability is going to be an issue at all. Of course, they run these somewhat of a, on a diagonal, which is a change from last year. I think in part because they're trying to make it a little bit more smooth as you toe off. And you can see that those flex screws run in that same direction. So giving it just a little more flexibility than what they had in the previous version of the shoe, but not quite as much as what you're going to find in the A6 Nova Blast 2. So speaking of which, let's take a look at the outsole on the Nova Blast 2. And here you can see that they've got their AHAR rubber, which stands for the a6 high abrasion rubber and this is their plus version which means that it's 50 percent more durable a hard than what they have in other running shoes that they produce and they have plenty of it they're covering up all of that flight foam blast material and basically all of the areas that would have ground contact in both cases i felt really safe and secure i didn't have any issues with you know traction or grip to the road so i think in both cases they did a really good job here with the outsole to sum it all up, the Hoka Clifton 8. Now it's a little bit more narrow in the toe box, a little bit looser fit across the midfoot section of the shoe. That soft compressed EVA foam that they have on foot, now that is very comfortable to run in, highly cushioned, a little less maybe action in that midsole, but the flexibility, it's a little stiffer in the forefoot. So I do feel like because they're a little lighter and you get a little bit more spring or pop off the toe that they're a little faster. The A6 Nova Blast 2, it's a bit more form fitting. So you have a little bit more room to display your toes in the toe box, but it feels really snug across the midfoot section of the shoe. And that flight foam blast material has a lot more action to it. I feel like it's just got a lot more bounce or spring. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that the information helps you decide which shoe is right for you. I enjoyed making this for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.